I'm Marty Wolf. I've worked with small, mid-sized, and billion-dollar companies across America. Through these experiences and being a lifelong learner, reading hundreds of books and interviewing hundreds of the brightest business minds in the world today, I now feel an obligation to share what I learned with you. Get ready to learn from the best. This is the Business Builder Show with Marty Wolf. Welcome to the Business Builder Show on C-Suite TV. I'm Marty Wolf, your host for the Business Builder Show, again on C-Suite TV. This show is for entrepreneurs, business owners, and business leaders. I'm at the University of Pennsylvania, and my guest is Annie McKee, and I'd like to point out Ph.D. Right, Annie? That's right. Welcome to the Business Builder Show. Thank you, Marty. I'm really glad to be here. We're going to talk about your latest book, which is, hold it up to the camera appropriately, How to Be Happy at Work by Annie McKee, co-author of the New York Times bestseller, Primal Leadership. I'll ask you that question in a minute, but before, on the top of this cover, it, it says here, practical and powerful advice from anyone, anyone can benefit. I'll say that again. Practical and powerful advice anyone can benefit from. And it's guided by this guy named Daniel Goleman. Can you tell me who Daniel Goleman is? Uh, Dan Goleman is a great guy. He's a friend of mine, and uh, a lot of our listeners probably know Dan. He's, um, he's a prolific writer. He's written about emotional intelligence. His recent book is called Altered Traits. It's about mindfulness. Great yeah. book. Yeah. He's a wonderful person and a great guy and co-author with me on, on this on Primal Leadership. That's yeah. right. Yeah, Primal Leadership. I have the other books that uh, you've been involved with. So Primal Leadership, Becoming a Resonant Leader in Resonant Leadership. I've already confessed I haven't read all of them. I, I got through Primal Leadership for the most part, but I did read yours. Thank you. So I'm, I'm, ready, I'm ready to talk about it. So that whole experience, uh, the whole emotional intelligence journey, I'm maybe oversimplifying it, but writing those books, uh, how did that prepare you for this book that you've just written and or your career? Talk to me about that experience. Yeah, those are good questions. Well, you know, for now over two decades, I've worked with leaders and organizations, many of our Viewers and our listeners will be familiar with the idea of mo emotional intelligence. In mm -hmm. the last 10 years or so, it's caught on. What we know about emotional intelligence is that if you're self-aware, if you can manage your emotions, and if you can read your environment mm -hmm. and then respond accordingly, you're going to be more effective as a manager and a leader. Yeah. And, you know, you asked how did that inform me and, and my work in this new book? Well... Even though we were running around the planet working with leaders all over the place and helping them to become more effective, I felt there was something more, something mm. that was really, truly getting in the way of people's effectiveness. And, and lo and behold, it was how they feel about their work and their workplace. Mm. How they feel about their work. Now, Amy, I'm going to throw you a curveball. All right. Are you ready? I'm ready. How they feel about work. <laughs> um... So I'm a CEO. Are people paying attention to your work and to Daniel Goleman's work? You know where I'm going. I do. Let's address it. So I do. Let, let's get that. Let, let's deal with that right out of the gate. Um, other people have written about happiness. Uh, so, so give me some data. You've talked to people all over the world. Give me some data, or not data, just. Support that idea a little bit. I will. Um, it, you know, we're in a really fortunate position right now because what we're writing about and what I'm writing about is not just some good idea, some trendy idea. We can back up this notion that feelings matter with hard science. We can back it up with neuroscience. We feel before we think and how we feel and mm -hmm. what we think impacts what we do. Mm. So that's the business case for mm. paying attention for feelings in the workplace. Right. There's another there's another aspect to it. Life is too short to be unhappy at work. Mm. It's too short. Yeah. And many of us work 8, 10, 12 hours a day. That's a third of our waking lives. Yeah. It is absolutely unacceptable to write off a third of our lives as miserable or just okay. So mm -hmm. we've got the hard science, we've got the business case, and we've got, frankly, a moral and ethical case for mm. why we ought to pay attention to happiness in the workplace. Mm. A friend of mine, Bob Chapman, mm -hmm. you may have know that name, Bob Chapman from Barry Weimler, um, believes in this uh, 
what you're talking about so much, and he connects it directly to productivity and effectiveness. So that's why business leaders should be listening to this show and listening to your message, right? Yeah, there's a results-based case. A results-based case. Mm -hmm. You know, again, I like to bring it to that kind of quickly. As you're uh, listening to us, you're already engaged with Annie, I'm sure. Go to her website. It's AnnieMcKee.com, and it's A-N-N-I-E, McKee, M-C-K-E-E.com. So go to her website while we're talking. Listen carefully, watch carefully, but go back and forth because her website's terrific. Thank you. And you talk about the book. I do. And you have little uh, little assignments and tests in there, I think, too, don't you? I've got all kinds of stuff on the website that's free. Everyone is free. Little articles, really informative pieces that give practical advice about what you can do, not only to be happier in the workplace, but to create an environment where others can be happier and more effective, too. I think that's so important, and we're, I want to get to that, too. Um, I didn't do a formal introduction. So here we are at the University of Pennsylvania. <laughs> You've got a wonderful title. You have a fascinating background. Give us a little bio. Well, how far back do you want me to go? Yeah, well, right? we're going to get back there, but you can you can introduce yourself any way you want. Okay. Whatever you're so, comfortable with. Yeah, I'm here at the University of Pennsylvania. I'm actually thrilled to be here. I lead the Penn CLO Executive Doctoral Program, which is a fascinating program for working professionals who are quite senior in their careers. Mm. They come back here and do a doctorate in their 40s or their 50s wow. while working. Oh, While yeah. working, they don't have to take seven or eight years out of their professional lives. And the kind of folks who show up and, and actually want to do a doctorate at, at that stage in life, I learn as much or more from them as we yeah. teach them. That is for sure. Yeah. I also lead the MedEd Master's Program for Physicians. It's for physicians who... They run residency programs. They're responsible for learning. Can you imagine what it means to be a physician today with mm -hmm. all that you need to learn and do? Mm -hmm. And these, these folks teach. They teach not just medical students but other physicians. Mm -hmm. And um, obviously do all the other things that you do when you're a professor in a university. Um, help out, um, you know, support the school, support yeah. the university. I, I love it here, actually. I can tell. <laughs> That's nice. I've known you a little bit uh, yeah. already. Uh, we uh, connected uh, through a mutual friend. That's uh, right. Peter Hemmelman, and uh, I was down for that, and that's where we first met. And by the way, I'm here because of your emotional intelligence. Oh, really? You were so oh. kind to us when we were here. You followed up with an email, and mm -hmm. I go, wow. Here's someone who really practices what they preach. I try. I well, try. you succeeded. I, yeah, well, I'm not perfect. None of us are, but I try. But I'm here because of that. I'm Thank here you. because of the way I was treated, the way that I, 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 was, I felt, hmm. you know, being connected to you. So I waited until I was watching for this book to come out. And again, the book is How to Be Happy at Work by Annie McKee. And um, so who did you write this for? Is a specific audience or general? Talk to me about that. Who'd you that's, write it for? That's a great question. Um, our other books, they're all published by Harvard Business Press, right? Right. And our other books are really directed at managers, supervisory level, but really, you know, upper middle management yeah. and about people who are responsible for a lot of other people. This book is, is really, truly directed at anybody and everybody who works. Someone who works. Somebody who so works. So our, our market is somebody who's mm -hmm. working. Entrepreneurs, um, managers, employees, upper middle managers, CEOs, all of the above. When we walk into our workplace, most of us want to do our best. Most of us want to enjoy ourselves. Most of us want to, you know, live our do values. Well. Do well. We right? want to do well. We want to, we want to be fun. happy. We, we want to do well. We, and have fun. And have fun. And have fun, right? Yeah. And we don't want to go home and sort of be miserable and be cynical and bring all that negativity home. We don't want that. And this book is directed at anybody and everybody who would like to enjoy their work more. And there's some real solid tips on how to do it. There really yeah. are some solid tips. And again, I'm going to admit publicly that uh, another book about being happy in the workplace. I have to admit it. And I said, I'm going to read this because I like Annie. Wow, this is different. Thank so you. I'm going to give you lots of kudos because this is different, both with the tips and your background and your experience. It was, um, it, 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 it's definitely different, and it's definitely uh, pretty good. So can I, can I tell you why yeah, it's different? Sure. I, I think I, I know because I've read a lot of the books on happiness too, and many of them are good, many of them are not. Are not right? <laughs> um, yes. And and I and I think what I tried to do was to ensure that I wasn't just 
talking about a good idea, talking about feelings as if that's all that matters, right? There's another reason that we have to pay attention to what mm -hmm. we're doing and how we feel in the workplace. And it has to do with this feelings, impact thoughts, impact behavior. Mm -hmm. So I drew on research, my own yeah. and other people's, to ensure that this was a sound and solid case for why we need to attend to how we feel about our work. Amen. <laughs> and you hit it. So uh, specifically on page 43, you tell us, many years ago, I had a very different life. True. Mm -hmm. So I want you to tell me about that and how the heck did you get here? Because you come a long way. I have come so a long way. So talk to me about that. Yeah, Marty, I really have, I have come a long way. I didn't take a normal path, you know, high school to college to first job and et cetera. Um, I finished high school at a very young age, and then I decided to get my education a different way. Traveled and did all sorts of things. And the problem with that is that once you make a decision to do things really differently, there are some consequences, both good and bad. Boy, did I get an education. <laughs> I also found myself in my 20s as a uh, mother of three young kids with no college education and no way to get a good job. Yeah. That's hard. That's hard. It's hard. And during those years, um, I made it however I could, you know, waitressing or cleaning tables or taking care of an elderly couple. And, uh, you know, that was not easy. It was not easy. But... Back to the the topic of this interview, yeah, I wasn't always happy at work. I mean, it's hard to be happy when you're cleaning somebody else's house, right? But yeah, there's but, a but. There is Go a ahead, tell there me. is a but. Um, I realized even back then when I didn't have all this education, I hadn't read all these books, that somehow I had to find something redeeming in my work life, and and I did. I found. In several cases, I worked for people I respected, so I learned from them. Yeah. Um, I found a mentor. Um, I found that I actually enjoyed doing a good job. And yeah, I, I, important. it's really important yeah. no matter what you're doing. I went home feeling like I did a good job, and that yeah. was fulfilling to me. Yeah. I also realized uh, that I didn't want to stay there. You had to do something different. I needed to do something what in, different. What, what was your first step? To move into the path. Don't give me the whole path. The first step. Did you enroll in something? Did you take a course? What was that actual step? The very first step was enrolling in community college. I love community colleges. I love them because yeah. they, they help people like me back in the day. And they help yeah. people like me now who are scared to go to college, who don't know where to start, who are really unsure of themselves. They help us. Yeah. And that was my first step. So we are speaking with Annie McKee. Her book is How to Be Happy at Work. Go to her website, AnnieMcKee.com. Learn more. We're going to take a short break. We're going to get into some real heavy-duty stuff, so stay with me. We'll be right back. You're listening to The Business Builder Show on C-Suite TV. Stay tuned for more of The Business Builder Show. But first, I want to remind you of my professional relationship with CreditLine1.com. If you need business or real estate financing, you can get a quick quote on creditline1.com slash Marty Wolf. That's creditline1.com slash Marty Wolf. Welcome back to the Business Builder Show on C-Suite TV. I'm speaking with Annie McKee, Ph.D. I want to keep pointing that out because <laughs> you've earned the right for that. Her website is anniemckee.com. Got to check it out. We're talking about her book, How to Be Happy at Work. We've already built the case. If this isn't the normal book, check it out. All right, let's get into some real specific information that's in the book. I picked out a couple of stories that I connected with. Great. You talked about a gentleman named Josh Perez, and I believe he was with Dun and Bradstreet. And the context, I think, was the courage to lead from your values. Right. You have courage to lead from your values. Talk to me about Josh. Talk to me about that chapter. Yeah, Josh is a great guy, and he's an outstanding leader, Marty. Um, let me talk to you about that chapter first. You know, I, I identified through my own research, as well as looking into positive psychology and neuroscience, that there are three elements of happiness that really matter in the workplace. Okay. One is living your purpose, feeling that what you're doing has meaning. Matters. That it matters, that yeah. you're making a difference, mm -hmm. that somehow you're impacting people or something you care about. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to come back to that in a minute, because that's what I'm, I'm <clears throat> going to talk about with respect to Josh. 
And then hope. We need to feel that what we're doing is leading us to a future that is personally meaningful, not just the organization's future, our own future. Important. And then friendships so at work. Hopefully we'll come back to that later as well. We'll make sure we come back to it because okay. we don't want to leave that out. It's no, an important part great. of it. It know? is. It really is. Yeah. So Josh. Um, Josh is a senior leader at, at Dun and Bradstreet, and if our uh, viewers read the book, you'll hear his whole story. It's really fascinating. Josh is a really incredible leader for a number of reasons, but one of the reasons, and this is what I really tried to home in on in the book, is that Josh has some really clear values about how you treat people. Mm. No matter where they are in the organization, no matter what they do, mm. it starts with respect. Yeah. It starts with being willing to really listen, not just listen or not just fake listen, fake listen. <laughs> which is, yes, yeah. We've all experienced we, that we have. in our careers, especially we, our corporate careers, well, unfortunately. We yes. have, and it's yeah. become, it's become the, you know, sort of trendy to do active listening and to, and frankly, pretend you're listening. The technical side of this that somebody learned, it's exactly. not the emotional connection. Exactly. It's yeah. not emotionally intelligent when you're fake listening. Yeah, correct. <laughs> Josh doesn't do that. Josh really listens. And, you know, during a particular, particularly challenging time in the business, they were transitioning, new business yeah. processes, all those sorts Absolutely. of things. Yeah. Happens all the time, yeah. constantly. Yeah. Um, he, he felt that maybe some of the people down through the organization didn't feel heard and didn't feel necessarily that senior management understood what they were facing in these challenges. Mm. Some leaders would have just done some simple superficial process if anything, brought something to, from the external, maybe bring it in. Exactly. Check the box. We're doing this. Check box. Check right. box. Not Josh. Josh opened up the phone lines. He opened up his door. He found processes to go out and truly listen to people, yeah. and and then and then do something about it. Yeah. Get things out of their way. So I mean, this sounds like what any good leader should do. Um, back to how to be happy at work. Um, if you feel that your work has meaning, what that means is that you're living your values on a daily basis and you, sure. go, you can go home and say, I did it, yeah. I did what I feel is important, and I've helped people. So let's connect that to when you're, you've already pointed out that you spend a lot of time at work. When, if you leave work unhappy, does that carry through you come home and kick the cat if you will yeah you know you know it does marty it does it does it affects families yeah, communities etc it, right and uh, honestly it's usually not the dog or the cat you usually give them a hug right it's, the animals it's, get the love yeah, it's the people it's, right it's the people it's the people that it's take the, the brunt. people it's the yeah. kids who you know yeah. you don't have the patience it's the partner or husband wife spouse partner that you love who doesn't get your time or attention yeah. it's all of those things it's why why it good. matters so much, what you're talking about. Again, Annie McKee yeah. is my guest. Her book is How to Be Happy at Work. If you haven't ordered at least one copy, if you're a leader, if you're a CEO, you want to order at least 100 <laughs> copies. I'm suggesting that, Annie. Is that okay? That's okay, Marty. At least 100. Thank so you. So you, you've got to share this with your entire group. The Power of Hope mm -hmm. really sunk in with me. And you talk about vision, plans, and self-empowerment in terms of the power of hope. Tell me, give me some, some highlights of that. Let me back up a second. Sure. I, I think it, your viewers will know that if we've ever had a bad time in life, a tragedy, a natural disaster, we've seen several in 2017. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Um, a time in life that's really, really difficult, what gets us up in the morning is hope. It's amazing what we human beings can do uh, because of our hope. Uh, hope changes the world. It literally changes the world. And, you know, work isn't always easy. Uh, no. Not by any stretch of the imagination Correct. is it easy. Sometimes it's difficult for years on end. Um, Could be. Especially now because of, you know, constant changes in organization. Leaner, meaner, and I do mean meaner, organizations that are hard. I understand. Yeah, hard to work in. We have to believe that what we're doing is leading us to a future that is better than today. And the mistake that a lot of senior managers make, and I've experienced this in my coaching and consulting, which I spend a lot of time doing that, they think the organization's vision is enough to motivate people. It doesn't matter it's how not. noble it is. It's not. It can be a part of it. and yes, It would be a helpful part of it, no question. No question. 
And it is leadership's responsibility to make sure that vision is communicated in a way that speaks to people. Right. That's not usually done all that well. But Correct. even if it's done beautifully, it's not enough. You need a personal vision. You need a personal vision. The hope, the understanding who you are, what you do, what you want to accomplish, that in kind of thing. In your life. In your life. Not just your career. And then you need plans. Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to yeah. skip for a minute. You need plans. So I'm, yeah. I'm going to take you off a little bit. Because you talk about, I think this is important. You talk about making a difference where you're at. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. many of these things say, well, okay, you should change your job. You should do something crazy, yeah. you know, that's life-shattering potentially. Yeah. You talk a lot about in the book about doing what you can where you are. I love that. You've got to start with that, right? Yeah. There are times when we need to leave our jobs. There are times. Um, but running away is not the answer. And a lot of us can't leave our jobs. Of you course. point out, you can't. You need I, a job. You cannot, right? Yeah. So you have some great advice. Well, in the it's, book. it starts with self empowerment. It starts with, with recognizing that we can do a lot to improve our mindset, our attitude, and our work experience. There's a lot more. I think we. I think we often draw a very small box around what we can mm. do in the workplace. Mm. I'm trapped. Um, I can't. They won't let me. Uh, the proverbial them. Uh, you know, yeah. th those things are, are, they're dangerous. And we do that to ourselves. And yeah. we got to get out of those traps. Yeah. That's why your book is so important. Mm, thank you. And I'm glad that you said that right at the very beginning. Who's this for? I asked you. And you said, this is for people who work. That's right. Those are people who are going out, whether they're working at home or they're going, and you worked at home, I work yeah. at home. It's still, um, you know, you have to understand these things. Hope. I'm gonna, mm. it's, it's so important. Mm. Um, you know, again, I'm jumping all over the place. I hope you're okay. You wrote the book, so you know the answers, I'm... you know. <laughs> Let, let's jump to, uh, uh, we hit on hope. I wanted to make sure we got that through. Maybe mm. not as much. You need to write, read the book to get all the details. <laughs> um, another story that I loved is uh, Janet Dulega. Am, yes. am I saying her name right? Janet Dulega, yeah. Dulega, got it. and she's with Sunglass Hut. And this is a big point that you drive home often. The idea of having friends at work. Oh, boy. Having friends at work. Talk to me about that. Right. And <laughs> your reaction is exactly what people often think. Well, I'm not supposed to be friends at work. Yeah. Well, that's just ridiculous because we do have friends at work. I mean, let's just name it. Our friends are at work. They're in our personal lives, too. Yeah. We spend a lot of time with these folks. Yeah. Okay? We yeah, spend a we lot of time. And when those relationships are toxic or when we're afraid, when we feel like somebody's coming after us, work is miserable. Work is work can miserable. Be really miserable. It's that way. stressful. We get sick. Um, we are fearful. It is awful. What we need are relationships that are uh, that are ripe with trust and respect, and you know, relationships where we can be ourselves. Now, mind you, Marty, this doesn't mean you have to go on vacation with people that you work with. You don't right. even have to go out to That's dinner important. with them, right? Yeah. You don't have to tell them every detail of your personal life, and chances are that's not actually really a good idea. That may not be a good idea. That's Correct. right. That's I agree. Right. I agree. But in order for us to have trust, in order for us to have respect, in order for us to feel safe being ourselves, we have to know each other enough so beyond the job, beyond the tasks, that we can expand that relationship yeah. just a bit. It's not enough to just do the tasks together. Well, it makes you happy, but let's say this is the Business Builder Show. There's a real practical part of that if you trust that you're going to do the work. So, uh, Annie, believe it or not, we're winding down. We oh, need to wind down. Too bad. So, what a fascinating discussion. Um, uh, we missed a lot. Again, Annie McKee has been my guest, and her book is How to Be Happy at Work. Take a minute, drive something home that you want to, something that maybe I didn't ask you. Uh, close it up. Wrap it up for us. Yeah, um, just for our viewers, it's, it's easier than you think. Take time for yourself. Um, take a lunch break, for crying out loud. Take a walk. Uh, take, take a, lunch a break. walk. Yeah. Um, go grab somebody. You know, Have some fun at the workplace. Plan for it. And really, truly think about how what you're doing today fits into a vision that you have for yourself as a person. Yeah. Take some time and reflect. It'll be worth every moment. And start. Don't keep on putting it off. Right. Start to do something 
enroll in a community college. There like you go. Annie did. Do something. Read a book. Start with Annie's book. Again, Annie McKee, the University of Pennsylvania. Thank you so much for being a guest on the Business Builder oh, Show. Thank you, Marty. This has been great. Thank you. AnnieMcKee.com is her website, her book for the umpteen time, because I want to sell thousands of copies. How to be happy at work. So you have been listening to the Business Public Show on C-Suite Radio. I'm your host, Marty Wolf. Thanks for listening. Till the next time. Bringing the business classroom to you. It's the Business Builder Show with Marty Wolf.